we're here still talking about the doctrines of the cross and actually one of those uh, doctrines of the cross is the doctrine of redemption and that's that's one of the things I want to talk to you about today. So first of all we as opener preachers or just as evangelists that preach Jesus on the cross well it's crucial that we find one of those um, doctrines of the cross in our preachings and uh, substitution we will see it later but substitution it it's commonly repeated in every single doctrine of the cross and redemption is the one I want to talk um, about today so let's define redemption what does it mean to be redeemed so redemption is our emancipation from sin in other words imagine it's just like an unofficial letter where it says that there's someone who have paid the price, who have paid, who have paid um, the fine so that you and I could be set free. Imagine you and I were in jail and then we had no way to pay the fine. No way. And then all in a sudden, there comes the guard and says, hey, you know what? Here's the official letter. Somebody paid the price for you. So there you go. You can be free. So this is pretty much what Jesus did on the cross for us. He paid the price. The Bible says that the fine for breaking God's laws is actually death. So I want you to come with me to Genesis 2. And I, I won't read a um, specific passage, but I want to tell you pretty much what the story is all about. You know, Adam and Eve, they were living in a perfect world without sin. So one act of disobedience takes them out of the Garden of Eden, takes them out of the presence of God. And before God sent them out of the Garden of Eden, the Bible says that Adam and Eve, they were so embarrassed, they were so ashamed. For the first time, their eyes were opened and they could realize that they were naked. And, and the Bible says that they were trying to cover their nakedness with some leaves from a fig tree. And, and God says, wait a minute, so he went, he searched for an animal, an innocent animal in the Garden of Eden. And so he killed the animal, he sacrificed the animal. Blood needed to be shed for them to be covered, for them to be rescued of their shame, of their nakedness. So once they are covered, once this animal has been sacrificed, now they are sent out of the Garden of Eden. So in Genesis 3, we, we start seeing how we become slaves of sin. But first of all, there was a price that was paid and that was the blood of this innocent animal that set, those, um, that, that set Adam and Eve free from their shame, from their nakedness. So they were still naked, but there was something that was covering us. And um, well, the, the whole Bible, I dare say that every single word that is in the Bible is actually pointing and it's talking about redemption the whole bible is full of redemption and and we will see a couple of stories today so i want to talk to you about god taking his people out of egypt out of slavery they 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 were in there for around 400 years and they were living in slavery performing hard tasks during the day and so God, he takes them out of slavery with a, powerful, with a powerful arm. And so this is our model to illustrate how God takes us out of slavery, how God breaks the chains of sin so that we can be set free. So the whole Bible is actually full of redemption. I dare say that every single word that is in the Bible is actually pointing to redemption. And uh, our model to illustrate how God break our chains of sin, we will take as a model um, God taking his people out of Egypt, out of slavery. And uh, this people of Israel was being redeemed. They were being, um, they were taken out of Egypt, out of slavery, so that they could dedicate their lives to serve God. So uh, as I said before, Exodus, becomes our model to illustrate this doctrine of redemption, though we can find many examples in the Bible. For example, this, this demon-possessed man, he was actually so um, overwhelmed with, imagine, thousands of demons living inside of him. And then Jesus comes and he set him free. 
And his response, it was, Jesus, I want to follow you. So this is actually what we should uh, respond when we see the deed of redemption of Jesus on the cross. So I want to, I want to tell you this uh, story that's, that's actually a real story. And um, imagine there was an auction. Imagine the auction platform. And there was a woman being sold in there. So many people in the room. And then a man raises his hand and he goes, I, I want to go uh, for 20 coins for that woman. Then another man in the other part of the room, he goes, I will give 50. Then a man stands up and he goes, I want to give a thousand coins for that woman. Then there was an astonishing silence in that room. And the salesman goes, bang, sell. And so this woman was just, imagine what was crossing through her mind. She was just thinking, was she going to be raped that night where the daily tasks will be? And so uh, when she's introduced to her new owner, she spit on, her, on his face. And so this man was, was just like trying to clean up his face. And he goes, there you go, my dear. I have bought you to set you free. And you know, this story, it might sound like a novel, but uh, it was actually a real story. And just as, as this little story, that's what Jesus did on the cross for us. He went to the cross willingly to pay the price. He didn't really have to pay because the Bible says that he lived a perfect life without sin. So there was no punishment for him. There was no, no fine to be, pray, to be paid because he didn't break any law. He didn't break any commandment. He just lived a perfect life. Still, he willingly went to a cross to pay the price for our freedom, to pay the price for our liberty. Now, this does not mean that once we've been set free, we are without master. No, that, that doesn't really mean that. The doctrine of redemption, what it, what it means is we've been set free, but, but it's not that we no longer have a master. We do have one, but he gives us the freedom to choose whether we want to serve him or not. You know, another thing that calls my attention, for example, the apostles in the New Testament, if you read the, their letters, for example, Paul, James, or Jude, they will call themselves as servants of Christ. They would just call themselves slaves of Christ. Paul, in his letter to the Romans, he calls him slave, or he introduces himself as a slave of Christ. And this calls my attention because they realize what Jesus did for them on the cross. They realize that the, the, the burden of sin, the pay they had, the paid for their sin, they actually lived the crucifixion and they saw how terrible it was, the punishment for sin. So once he saw what Jesus did for them on the cross, he had nothing to say, but you know what, Jesus, I want to serve you. I want to serve you. You gave your life for me, so I want to give mine to serve you. So if you read the New Testament, the apostles, they will just ident identify themselves as slaves of Christ. Again, I want you to come with me to 2 Corinthians 5.15, and I'm going to read it for you. It says, He died for everyone, so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. And that is actually what the apostles were doing. They just realized there was a revelation coming out of this passage. And, and they just no longer, they, they couldn't live for themselves no longer. And instead, they started to walk and live for Christ. So that's what redemption means that we have been bought to set free and we have the freedom to, to choose whether we want to serve and follow Jesus or not. But this must be the most natural response once we have seen what he did for us, once we have seen the, the price he paid to set us free. Um, I want to talk about my personal experience to you. A few uh, years ago, when I was actually a teenager, I started to have some um, disorders with my, I started to have some disorders. And um, one day I was just looking at the TV and, and I saw a supermodel and I thought, well, I want to look like her. 
And going back to my past, I grew up without a father. And somehow I was looking for acceptance in people. But what I, what I was actually looking for, it was that accept, acceptance that a father brings to you. So um, I thought that maybe being so um, beautiful, like this supermodel on the TV, I could find some acceptance in people. So I started to throw up every single thing I, I ate. And, and that was the starting point of bulimia in my life. And it took a lot of, of years for me to be set free of those chains of sin. And, you know, this is going a, a little bit out of the equation. This is why it's so important for us as open-air preachers to go through the law. Because the law is just a mirror that shows us how dirty we are on the inside. So once God confronted me with my sin, once God confronted me what was deep inside of my heart, I was actually offending God with my style of, of life. I was, it was not just the throwing out part, but it was what was deep inside of my heart. It was rebellion. It was actually lies. I was just lying to people. I was in church and everybody would ask, Nidia, how are you? And I was just, I'm going fine. I'm doing excellent. I'm living in holiness. But there was, there was something hidden in the dark. And then once God confronted me with my situation, I realized I really needed a redeemer. I wanted, and I needed most than anything, more than anything, someone who could set me free from those chains of sin. How could I just leave the bulimia aside and, and just keep on walking free from my burdens, free from my chains? I couldn't do it on my own. So I, I, I started to look at the Bible and God showed me what Jesus did on the cross for me, that he paid a price, the most high price, the higher price that anyone could pay. So I, I was just like, well, he, he, if he did that for me, then I just want to serve him. I want to follow him, not because something I can take from him, but because of what he has already done for me. That was my response to him. So this is my, my personal experience of how God broke the chains of bulimia. He set me free. And in, as I said before, it was something that took actually several years, but it was revelation coming to my life. It was revelation that, that actually set me free from my chains. The revelation of, of seeing Jesus on that cross, of seeing how Jesus paid the price for me, of seeing that I didn't really have to pay the price, an eternal price, an eternal punishment for my sin, but that Jesus could set me free. It was actually what took me out of bulimia. And it's something supernatural that I can really explain. In other words, he just set me free. I don't have the, the, the will to, 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 do the, to do it anymore. And that's something that only the Holy Spirit can do. And that was my personal experience. And so uh, God broke my chains. And my response it was just, I want to follow you. I want to follow you. There's nothing good for me outside of you. So that was just my response. And I wanted to share it with you because that's actually what redemption means. Somebody pay the price for us. But it means that um, it does not mean that we have no longer a master. We have one. But again, he gave us the freedom to choose. Um, so redemption is actually the less complex doctrine of the cross, but still it has an important job and it's to disappear, to get rid of the longest distance of the universe. And that is the distance be between our thoughts and our heart. And, uh, you know, once, once we connect who Jesus is and we have this revelation of what he did for us, that's the way that we can be free. That's the only way. So um, there's still one component of this doctrine of redemption to be fulfilled. Jesus said that we will go through hard times, through difficulties, and uh, together with these signs of his return. He said, stand and look up, for your salvation is near. And you can find it in Luke 21, 28. And, uh, well, he promised us that we will receive as our inheritance a restored world with no sin on it. 
just as it was before, just as it was in the Garden of Eden. So creation groans for it as much as we do. And uh, well, I just want to encourage you to keep on going, to keep on fighting the good fight and uh, preach this doctrine of redemption, preach the doctrines of the cross. You know, people need to know, people, people need to know where, where they were and what Jesus did for them. So in that very moment, they would just appreciate what Jesus did for them. They cannot do that. If, you, if you're just talking to someone, to uh, people that has cancer, and you just tell them, hey, I got the medicine, and they don't even know they have cancer, they will say, well, thank you, but I don't need it. But if you explain them their sickness, their illness, and then you give them the medicine, they would just appreciate it so much. And uh, that's what we need to do. We need to preach what their condition is, and then we need to preach what Jesus did for them on the cross. So this is basically uh, the doctrine of redemption. And I just want to encourage you, keep on going, keep on preaching. And uh, well, that we might be found faithful the day of his return.